guys, and welcome to GoodTube Review. Um, this is a continuation of the last video I posted of how to download and install the virtual system called VirtualBox. And this video I will show you how to actually use the software you just downloaded. So let's get started. First things first, we're going to go with New. We're going to click the Next. Right here it's asking you for a name for your OS and on the bottom right here it's asking for operating system you can click Microsoft Windows or Linux or whatever you want to use I'll be using Windows and I'll be using XP which is already listed but there's several other types you can choose from I'll go ahead and give it a, a name I'll just call it um, let's just call it XP and click the next this window here is asking for the how much memory you want to give your virtual operating system. Since I am using Windows XP, it uses very little RAM, so I'll go ahead and just leave it at the preset, which is at 192. Just click next on this thing. Next. Next. Okay, right here is another interesting thing you guys should be looking at. This tells you the size of the virtual hard drive you want to give it. For instance, I have a 160 gig on the primary computer, and the virtual box hard drive I'm going to be giving my virtual OS. Uh, it's preset at 10, but I'm going to give it a little bit less than that. Give it nearly 8, 8 gigs. Click Next. Click Finish. Uh, right here is telling me an error. How to fix that if you ever do get that. So go back to the name and just give it another name or reset it the name or just type in a new one. I'll just put win and continue. There we go. All right, now you can see it's listed right here, XP. I'll go ahead and click the Start. Here's your welcome screen. Okay, right here where it says Image File. If you have an uh, ISO image of the operating system you want to use, you can go ahead and click Image File and click the little folder and go to Add and then locate your ISO on your system. It could be on your desktop or wherever you may have stored it. But I will be using a disk, so I'll just go ahead and click the E drive and click Next. You have selected the following, you know, yada yada. Click Finish. Here's VirtualBox. Preparing the installation boot. All right, here we go. Windows Setup. If you never ever set up a OS before, there's different Windows screens that may pop up, but they're usually straightforward and they give you the information before you start doing anything. So this one's telling me Setup is loading files. So we'll just let that finish. I'll just pause the video right here. Now it's asking me to press the Enter key to continue on with the installation. So I'll just go ahead and press enter and it says a bunch of information about licensing and so on. At the bottom right here it says F8 I agree so I'll go ahead and press the F8 button. Another dialog Just press enter to install as you can see on the bottom. If you're wondering why the mouse disappears and reappears it's because when I am in my actual system, I could mess around, and when I go into the virtual system, I tap it, and now my mouse and all key functions on the keyboard are now interlaced with the virtual machine. And to get out of that, you press control on the right side, not the left side, the right side. Just tap the control on the right side, and your mouse reappears. And then tap it again to enter it, and now I'll press the enter key 
that this ask image is for the installation to press enter. I'll go ahead and press it. It's asking for a format. It's already preset, so if you're using XP, it's preset. Now it's going to start the, well, one of the installations. This may take a while, so I'll just go ahead and press Control, get out of that, and pause it. Now that's finished, and I'm waiting for a reboot. Let's find out. Here we go, VirtualBox doing another reboot. And there we go, Windows XP. The installation isn't complete yet, but we'll get there. Alright, here's the main menu of installation of Windows XP. It'll be about 39 minutes, probably less than that. I'll go ahead and pause it. This either way is going to take a while. All right, another screen. So I'll go ahead and enter the virtual box. Click next. Put a name in there. All right. Keep clicking through it. Date and time. All right, continuation of the installation. Pause it. All right, that's all done. And it is doing a reboot. Once again. This time it should go all the way to the very last installation, which is just a formality. And then you'll have full access of XP. But there is something you should know. The USB drives and the CD-ROM will not work unless you enable them. At the, at the very end of this video, I'll show you how to do that. So stick around. While this screen popped up, it's basically telling you the resolution of the screen could be better. And it's asking your permission to go ahead and do that. So if it does pop up for you, go ahead and press OK. And it's asking if you can see it. Go OK. Screen got a little bigger. Go ahead and drag this up here. All right. The first boot up's always the slowest. And there you go. Windows XP in a virtual machine. You could do pretty much anything you can normally do in any other main system. You can go ahead and install anything you like. Use it, update it, uninstall it. So I'll go ahead and shut it down. You still have to shut it down normally, or else you're going to get errors. Not on your main system, in the virtual system you get errors, and then you'll have a hard time in the virtual system. So treat it as a normal system. I'll show you guys how to enable your USB drives and your CD-ROMs or DVD-ROMs. As soon as it's done shutting down, OS you installed. Once you decide which one you want to enable, go ahead and go down the list. You could enable display settings, but we'll just do the basics. CD, DVD, ROM. Enable it. The ISO one, it works. But if you're really going to be booting stuff from the CD-ROM, go ahead and just leave it at that. Now the DVD-CD-ROM should be working on the virtual machine as well as the USB one, which we'll enable right now. All you do is just click Add a new USB. It's in. Press OK. and you shouldn't have any more problems and you could boot up your thumb drive or any other CD DVDs that you may like to use in your virtual machine. Hope this helped you guys out. Uh, don't forget to subscribe. See ya.